Welcome and to bet on it. NFL Week 9. I am Kelly Stewart, joined by Marco D'Angelo, Joe Ranieri, and Teddy Covers. We're going to go over these primetime games here off the top of the show. But if you're new here, we're going to go through the rest of the show with you guys as well. The gold segment from VR. Are you high or not high enough if you're Joe Ranieri? Sandwich game? I think I might have condemned the deli after last week. So there might be a trap game from Marco. Teddy's playing just the tip. And of course, I'm looking for barking dogs. Proptologist to the stat daddy. And of course, ending it all with best bets. Joe Ranieri, I'm going to start off with you. Thursday primetime game. Houston at the New York Jets. We've seen this one bounce back and forth. One and a half to two on the wager talk odd screen. Total 42 and a half. Oh, yeah. yeah the, the more disgusting this with the New York uh, Jets here who are coming into this game short week after one of the most horrific losses uh, of this franchise history, which is saying a lot, Cal, because this franchise has had some horrific losses in the past. But it does kind of feel like this is the low point, right? If you're ever going to buy on the Jets at the bottom of the market, this might very well be the opportunity, as we've just learned this week that uh, while Houston's got some issues, too, offensively, they just lost uh, Diggs now for the season with a knee injury. We know Nico Collins is still a couple of weeks away, so they are uh, they're kind of limping into this one here, and we know Stroud much better at home than he is on the road. Let's not forget it was Zach Wilson a year ago that took on this Houston team, and the Jets absolutely made life miserable for C.J. Stroud. So, uh, unfortunately, I won't bet it, but I I wouldn't hate anybody that looks at this Jets team and says now would be the time to back them here because I can't see this market getting any worse on them than they already are. And the Texans, a little bit overvalued here usually, but there's just at some point there's too many injuries, there's too many question marks about C.J. Stroud on the road against a defense uh, that is going to be playing with a lot of pride here after losing to the Patriots. So a lot of wind. We're expecting 10 to 20 mile per hour wind gust there at MetLife on Thursday night. Keep an eye on the weather. But the reality is I don't want anything to do with a side here. I think the under is probably the best look here, Cal. I think both of these offenses have struggled at times with anything consistent. I don't like Stroud on the road. I think the Jets' defense is poised to have a good plan of attack against them. Limited weapons now for Stroud. Give me the under, Cal, reluctantly here at MetLife on a Thursday night game. I don't think this is going to be any sort of shootout. Joe, I can't believe you do not want to back your Jets no. on the gold sheet. Thursday night game through the totals at least 42 points. Favorites that are coming off an upset loss, 33 10 and 2. That's 77% for you guys keeping track there at home since 2007. Come on. Let's just hear a J E T. No, I can't get one of those from Joe. All right. Let's see what we've got from Teddy. The Indianapolis Colts going with Joe Flacco. Five point underdogs at Minnesota. 46 and a half. Teddy, talk to me about how Joe Flacco implicates this line as well as this matchup. Well, it's really clear. When Joe Flacco was out to the starter, Andy took money, and deservedly so. And last week on this show, uh, in just the tip segment, I talk about fading Andy. Well, they covered last week, you know, at Houston. And this week, I'm buying the Colts. So what gives? Joe Flacco. Well, that's what gives. And that Christian Garrison as well. Andy, we like them as a dog. We don't like them as a favorite. They played eight games this year, and all eight have been decided by six points or less. I would not be surprised at all. If this game, too, is decided by six points or less. And let's start with some Minnesota piece of the equation, all right? Sam Darnold, we know he's had a good start. Does anyone trust Sam Darnold to have a good season? Mm, Yeah, I say he could turn into a pumpkin at any time. All right. And the loss of the left tackle, Christian Darasaw, is meaningful for me. I know TJ Hawkinson's back this week. But when you're talking about a QB who you don't fully trust... And then they lose their left tackle when you're trading for Cam Robinson. Cam Robinson got benched last Sunday. And I was going to start in Minnesota. I have issues there. And on the other side of the equation, Minnesota's defense. Look, Brian Flores' defense allowed back-to-back 30-point games. They allowed three of three red zone touchdowns last week. 
They only had three pressures on 34 Matthew Stafford dropbacks. All right. These are issues for a team that is now facing the experience. Look, Anthony Richardson might have struggled against this defense. Joe Flacco's seen it before. And Flacco's already, what, 716 passing yards, 7 to 1 touchdown interception ratio in the three games he's played this season. He had 13 touchdowns in five games for Cleveland last year. The Vikings are number 30 in pass defense. Yeah, we'll take the points with Indy in this one. And as a bonus prop recommendation, you might want to look at some of those Colts wide receivers over their totals. Number, look pretty low. Yeah, Teddy, I think you and uh, Joe Flacco are going to keep me off using Minnesota in my survivor pools this week. Marco D'Angelo. Uh, he's had a rough day, guys. He had some tech issues, got us off to a late start. So we're going to bring him back and make sure he's in a great mood because we're giving him the primetime game on Monday night, Tampa Bay at Kansas City. Kansas City is a nine-point favorite, 45 and a half. Marco, talk about this Tampa team. Like, I gave them out a couple weeks ago. I said, listen, they play up to their level of t- competition, and then now it seems that they don't. They are riddled with injury. Baker Mayfield may have turned into a pumpkin. Yeah, Kelly, and I'm just so happy to be here and joining you guys today. So, uh, you have no idea. Morning, <laughs> any of that. But uh, we look at this Monday night game, and, you know, Tampa Bay, last week we said, how are they going to score? They're down two receivers. Well, they still put up 26 points in defeat, but that was against Atlanta. Now, today, they're going to be facing one of the best, if not the best, defense in the NFL. Kansas City has been incredible. They've held six out of seven opponents to 20 points or less this season. Now, I'll be honest with you, whenever I was doing my work for this week's games, I look at every game and we look at all the different situations. And honestly, this was in the running to be a sandwich game. And why? Well, look at what Kansas City has schedule-wise. Two weeks ago, they played the 49ers in the Super Bowl rematch. Last week, they played division rival in a team that they don't like. Neither team likes one another. They played the Raiders here in Vegas in another uh, away game for the Raiders as it was a sea of red here uh, at Allegiant Stadium last week. And who do they play next week? Denver, really a team that's surprising everybody and might be the only team that can contend with Kansas City this uh, season in the AFC West. But the reason I didn't pull the trigger for it being a sandwich game is because it's a Monday night football game. You have Kansas City. They're still undefeated. They're playing on prime time. We know they're going to show up. This would have been a normal Sunday game. No question, without a doubt, I would add Tampa as the sandwich play. So am I going to take Tampa here? No, because I don't trust them with the injuries. What I am going to go with is I'm going to go with Kansas City. And we've seen a change of the guard. As far as the total, I'm not taking Kansas City the side. I'm taking the total here. Kansas City has changed their face of the team. We know it's Mahomes, but they're not scoring points as this team has been re- religiously scoring under 28 points a game. I'm going to look for this one to go under. Why? What's Andy Reid do when he has a lead? He runs the football. He uh, milks clock. And this team has done that well. And if you look, since 2022... When they play at home, and this is a stat you can find in the gold sheet, our good friends at the gold sheet, 17-5 and to the under. That's not something you think about when you think about Kansas City and this team. You automatically think they're putting points up on the board. Not going that route. Monday night football game with Denver on deck on a short week. Andy's going to want to get this team in and out without injuries, and that means shortening the game in the second half. Go under the total on Monday Night Football. Gold Sheet Football Newsletter for only 5 bucks. That's right. You can get this week's Gold Sheet Newsletter for only $5 at checkout using code GOLD5. It's normally priced at 29 bucks, but this week we're going to give you $24 off, $5 only out of your pocket. It's a really good opportunity to check out the Gold Sheet football newsletter. From one gold special to another, Yanni the Greek, welcome in for this week's NFL edition of the Gold. Thanks for having me, Kel. We're ready to go, ready to fire away. A lot going on in NFL already. 
Want me to just dive in? I'm ready to go. Yeah, let's do it. I, I always just let the dog off the leash on Sunday mornings. I'm so used to that. VR, <laughs> hit the ground running. Perfect. Let's start off where we need to, and that's the Wong teaser, because I've talked about it on this show each and every week. And come on last call every Sunday and try to share those teasable Wong bets. Bottom line, 3-0 and again last week, if you followed the criteria. And a perfect example was the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. They opened as a one and a half point favorite. So if you bet the opener, that didn't help you there. I think that was a losing teaser because they lost the game. But you weren't supposed to tease Tampa Bay or Atlanta, whatever it was. Tampa Bay opens as, let me just get that right. Uh, forgive me. They opened as one and a half point dogs. And then they closed at, at one and a half where Atlanta went to one and a half. Against the close, Tampa was the side. Against the open, it was a loss. The tease needs to be done against the most efficient number, and that's the closing number. That's when all the information's been baked into the cake. That's not the number we're trying to beat as straight betters laying 11 to 10, but as teaser betters, the handicap means nothing. The teams mean nothing. The only thing that matters is how efficient is that line and does it help me get through three, four, six, seven? That's it. About a half hour before kickoff. So last week it went three and zero again. We talked about it on last call. So over the last four weeks, not a single one teaser has lost. It went five and zero in week five, four and zero in week six, three and zero in week seven, three and zero in week eight. We narrow them down to the strongest ones that fit every criteria. If the si- if it doesn't signal, we don't fire. Twenty seven and six since week two. We pass on week one, 27 and six. So up about 20 positions already. It's like printing money without a handicap. Can't get better than that. Now let's get to some of this action. Uh, start off with, I start off at the top Thursday night game. Um, we're seeing this line not do too much movement. In fact, the Jets opened out one and a half, went to pick them, now back one and a half or two. Personally, I like the Jets side. I think this should be at least a field goal game, if not higher. Uh, I hear a lot of talk Houston should be the favorite. I think nothing could be further from the truth. Give me the New York Jets there. Now let's move on to some of Saturday, Sunday's action. Start off at the top. We we saw that the, the Tennessee Titans, they're about three, three and a half at some places, three minus 120 against the New England Patriots. Anything at three plus juice, the betting syndicates were getting down on the favorite, on the Tennessee side. In fact, I had Tennessee multiple times. Every time I could get minus 20, even minus 125, they wanted some more Tennessee money. More Tennessee, more Tennessee. That's why you saw some of the books, the sharper ones, have gone two, three and a half on the Tennessee side. Real quickly, Chargers and the Cleveland uh, Browns. Four and a half was the opener. Money came in right away. The, the look at it was four and a half. They opened three and a half, two and a half, down the two. All the sharp steam is on the Cleveland Browns. But the value's all gone now. It's been extracted. You can't have a four, ahead, uh, a four and a half look ahead and now look to take two on Cleveland. You may want to sprinkle the money line, but the plus two isn't going to help you right now. Personally, I think now, if I'm going to bet this game, I got to look to the favorite, to the, the LA Chargers side. Because again, now you're going through that key number of three. How off was the book? Remember, the look ahead was four and a half. The adjustment went to three and a half. It didn't go to three or it didn't go to two and a half. It went to three and a half, and then the market pushed it through to key three. That all that that value is gone. It's been extracted. So this is a favorite or pass situation. Now, if you like Cleveland, it's too late. Also, over got steamed in that one. Over 39 and a half, over 40, 40 and a half, 41, 41 and a half, 42. They were hitting that limit bet, limit bet, limit bet, limit bet. Real quickly, we saw the New Orleans Saints get bet up from the look ahead of four and a half, then five, six, seven, seven and a half. Gonna get some Carolina love. I think at eight, you should get some buyback. Don't let that scare you if you're on the New Orleans side. I just think once the line gets out three, four, five points of an adjustment, you're usually going to see sharp money come in opposite that. So don't be surprised to see some Carolina love. Uh, real quickly, some of the totals that I didn't touch earlier in the week, Buffalo, Miami, that one got steamed over 48, 48 and a half, 49, 49 and a half, 50, 50 and a half. You'll see a little resistance because it's around those key totals between 49 and 51. So don't be surprised to see a little bit of resistance. But the real move is on the over. Uh, what else can I get to? Uh, Seattle, oh, Seattle on the Rams. A lot of Rams love because of the, the return of the skill position players. Another look ahead of three. They brought it out at one and a half. Now the Rams are one and a half point favorites. I can tell you, I bet both sides of that. I have for one group a ticket on Seattle at plus money on the money line, and I have a Rams plus money on the money line as well. 
So no real position there around that one, one and a half, depending on uh, what side uh, the, that one and a half is on. It's been flipping back and forth between the Seattle and the Rams side. Rams are going to go off as the favorite, especially again with the skill position players back. And finally, Philadelphia Sunday Night Football continues to get money against Jacksonville. Should be one of the most highly teased games leading into Sunday night. Remember, a lot of early teasers will be tied into the Philadelphia Eagles come Sunday night. So the question is going to be, how quickly are the books going to protect themselves against that teaser? Are they going to do it or are they just going to leave it there? Because of right now, when I'm looking at this line, it's seven and a half. So they're allowing you to tease Philadelphia down to minus one and a half point uh, favorites with a low total that's getting steamed under from 47 and a half down to 45 and a half. It looks like an easy teaser on the Eagles. When something looks that easy, I'm always cautious. Let's see where that line ends up. Because if it lends up, you know, at up to nine, then it's no longer teasable, remember. Or if it even comes down to seven, flat across the board, it's no longer teasable. We want to tease those numbers against the close. Don't want to keep going long. I already went long enough, but I hope you got some good, valuable information from this. Someone asked also uh, if I could give my top three power ratings. It's evil. I think we all agree with the same three. It's Kansas City, Baltimore, Detroit, all within a point and a half of each other. Right now, I have KC at the top because I think the experience and they've been able to get it done. Even though some will have Baltimore at the top, I have KC above Baltimore, Detroit following them. Again, all within one and a half, two points max. Those are the three best teams in the NFL. Again, whether you follow bait, hope you do some damage. Come back Sunday for last call and we'll go over those long teasers and any late stuff as well. If you're looking for a VR's premium plays, wt.buzz backslash VR. You can get all of his stuff over at wagertalk.com. VR, we'll see you bright and early Sunday morning. Guys, how high is Joe after last week? Maybe not high enough. Is there a sandwich game? Maybe a trap. Teddy's just the tip. And of course, you guys know I have another one of those barking dogs. So I made a joke earlier about the deli being closed. Uh, but then I realized that we actually cashed the sandwich game last week. The sandwich was just so disgusting that I didn't want to eat it. So, Marco, is the deli back open this week? Yeah, Kelly, the, the deli's back open. And I'll tell you what, the abuse that I took on last week's show from you guys, because, you know, I had it coming from the week before and, you know, it was a bad week. I rebounded five and one on the two shows last week, and I brought – the same type of sandwiches that I always bring, and you just weren't happy with it. So, all right, no sandwich for you this week. You didn't like Jacksonville as a sandwich. I got a trap game for you. Oh, shit. It's Jacksonville we're going to show with in the trap game this week. You can run, Kelly, but you can't hide. Jacksonville uh, plus the points this week, and why not? Right now, everybody's in love with the Philadelphia Eagles. They're five and two. Everything's right in the world. Uh, Jacksonville's two and six. And so the public's going to want no part of them. But can we really get excited about Philadelphia uh, beating Cleveland three weeks ago, beating the Giants two weeks ago? And I don't know what that was last week with the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, they just imploded in the second half. I'm not sold on Philadelphia. But this is... Why it's a trap game, not a sandwich game, because it's like an open face sandwich. Do you see who Philadelphia has on deck next week? They've got Dallas. And no matter what the record is with the Dallas Cowboys, they know that by the time the season ends, that's going to be the team that they're going to have to reckon with. Then, well, we got the upstart um, Washington Commanders this year as well in the mix. But they've got a big game next week. And coming off a very satisfying win for Philadelphia, fat and sassy last week against Cincinnati. I just do not trust them laying over a touchdown against Jacksonville here. I'm going to go ahead and take Jacksonville plus the points. They got us the money last week. I know it wasn't pretty, but you know what? It doesn't have to be pretty. All you got to do is walk to the window with that ticket. They give you the money. That's what I'm doing this week. I'm taking Jacksonville plus seven and a half, not falling into the Philadelphia trap. It's laid out this week. Just walk to the window and cash a ticket, Joe. How hungry are you going to be when you do so? Well, uh, Cal, it, uh, we were certainly spot on uh, with uh, last week's Are You High? And I think this week uh, we got a pretty good shot going a little contrarian here, although the market seems to agree with me because I don't think we're high enough with this Browns and Chargers game. Uh, this opened up. 
a little bit lower, somewhere around that uh, that 40 mark. It's up to about 42, 42 and a half right now. Wouldn't shock me if it continues to get a little bit higher because I think we have a very sneaky over shootout possible here in Cleveland. And listen, Justin Herbert is playing about as well as any quarterback right now over the last couple of weeks. And what we've noticed, too, is that he must be feeling healthier than what he did to start the year. You may recall he had the uh, the foot issue in uh, in training camp. They started and Harbaugh went uh, full running, uh, all running here. I mean, everything was an under for the uh, for the Chargers. But quietly now over the last couple of weeks, he's averaging almost nine yards a pass attempt here. Uh, and that's been coming out of their buy. I mean, he was only averaging about five and a half, six yards prior to the NAT. That tells me that they're feeling, he's feeling a little bit better. He's able to plant the foot. And I think uh, they're going to be able to take advantage of throwing the ball against this Browns team. And in the meantime, I mean, there's, we saw a difference in a quarterback and what Jameis Winston uh, made to this Browns team last week. No doubt it is an upgrade over Deshaun Watson. I also like the fact that their offensive line is finally healthy again. Wyatt Teller returned to the offensive line. Jack Conklin in the offensive line. This was supposed to be the starting offensive line from the beginning of the year. Injuries decimated them, plus they had Deshaun Watson under center. All of that is gone. Nick Chubb is back into the fold now. He's had a couple of games under his belt. And don't discount Ken Dorsey being the offensive coordinator uh, for Jameis Winston and this offense now. Uh, I think the Chargers defense is a little bit overrated given the fact that they faced the second easiest schedule of opposing offenses thus far. They're a top 10 defense, even a top eight defense, but I'm not buying it. I I definitely think uh, the Browns are going to get theirs here, and I do think a healthy um, quarterback now for the Chargers and Justin Herbert gives them an opportunity, big play opportunity, and we all know Jameis is capable of turning the ball over in his own end at some point. It could be a pick six, a fumble. We all know there's probably going to be extra opportunities for points in this game. I just think this number is a little bit too low. I still think we've got a sneaky shootout in Cleveland this week with the Chargers and the Browns. So that number of 42, 42 and a half, not high enough for me this week, Cal. All right, it's time to play Teddy's favorite game, Just the Tip. That is my favorite. How'd you know, Cal? Uh, I can't even do let's... a straight face. I tried really hard. <laughs> yeah. That was Kelly uh... not me. I want everybody to know, on record, that was not a Kelly snort. That was a Teddy snort. It is what it is. I, I have my moments of snorting as well. So this is a rare instance in which I'm going to recommend the buy sign. Of course, that's what just the tip is, a little stock watch. Uh <laughs> I want to buy low right now on a team that I've got a big bet against for the full season. That team's the New Orleans Saints, and I really hope I'm not too right with this buy Saints because uh, the clients and I have a big ticket on the Saints under seven and a half wins. We got that at a nice plus price. So, yes, they went 2-0 to open the season. They're 0-6 since, so they have to go 6-3 and to beat me. We got a little room and not a ton. And it's also worth noting, Something to remember when your team falls behind early or falls behind in the first quarter. It's okay. Calm down. Saints started 2-0, and 0 and 6 sits. But we want to buy them here for a couple of reasons. And it starts with the schedule. They're at Carolina this week. Then, revenge game against Atlanta, a game they lost on a last-second field goal. They have Cleveland at home after that. Then a bye. And then the LA Rams at home. So they don't play a road game after this week in Carolina till December. They get a chance to feast on some home cooking. There are two other reasons uh, besides schedule why I like New Orleans as a buy side right now. Number one, and maybe most importantly, their stats are wide. New Orleans defense right now, you look at the yards per play data, and that's obviously for me a very important metric, dead last in the NFL in yards per play. This is not a dead last defense. This is a pretty good defense that's been worn down because the offense hasn't been able to move the football at all since their quarterback got hurt. Well, guess what? You know, so we have a defensive statistical numbers that are weaker than I think this defense actually is. And the team's getting healthier. Derek Carr could and should be back this week. The marks are telling us he's likely to play. Chris Olave came back last week. Taysom Hill came back last week. 
Uh, Marshawn Lattimore could be back at the quarterback this week. So getting healthier, weak schedule, stats that are lying, hey, that's a buy sign for me. I think the Saints are primed to cover some point spreads moving forward. The Saints are primed to cover some point spreads. Oh, boy, am I nervous about the Saints team for Survivor. Ooh, there's a couple options this week, and uh, this team will not be included in those options. This is a barking dog, and I tried to find one over a touchdown for you guys this week. We got there. Well, if you don't include the PAT, how about that? So, got Miami plus six here. I... I'm just going to say something nice about the Dolphins, right? It's been a little difficult when it's either Skylar Thompson or Tyler Huntley under center, but they did get Tua back. 28 of 38, 234 yards, touchdown pass, no turnovers. So even though they have struggled for the last few weeks and they did not win that game over the Chargers, I still like this team. There are only two games out of the wild card in the AFC, and by far this is the biggest game on their schedule but now let's talk about buffalo they're coming off a nice one in seattle got to fly back home josh allen finally throws an interception i know a lot of people like the over in this one i could see why these teams usually play in shootouts four out of the last five have went over 54 points so 48 and a half seems really really easy uh but that is not my forte so we will not be touching the total again to a back no Skylar Thompson or Tyler Huntley completely changes the dynamic but I don't think a healthy two is really built into this line I think last week the bookmakers took some sharp money on the Dolphins they had to move it and uh, the Cardinals came to play in the second half maybe Miami was looking ahead to this one maybe they just needed a week to get the kinks out but catching six as a divisional home dog too many points for this gal hope you guys have been taking your happy pills because i need a prescription andy lang after the cowboys cost me a five and oh sunday it's been a rough one but the doctor is back in the proptologist in fact and if you're new here you want to know why that's his nickname you guys picked it it's pretty simple there was no thought to it somebody said in the comment section we laughed that's how we that's how we roll here at wager talk (laughs) keep it very very simple so uh yeah kelly let's let's actually try and give out a good prop this week that's my goal let's actually give out a really good prop and let's go to jacoby myers and let's take his over 48 and a half receiving this total seems a bit low to me i'm looking at his receptions we'll start with his receptions those are looking great. Six, six, five, and seven, the last four games that he's played. Um, he's actually gone over this total in five out of the six games that he's played in. And the one game he didn't go over, Devontae Adams uh, was playing. We have no Devontae Adams. And he goes up against the Bengals, who uh, they're the 21st uh, worst secondary in the league, according to yards given up per game. But they've really been beaten up recently. Kelly, in the last three games, eight receivers have gone over this 48 and a half yard total eight in the last three games we only need one guy to go over in this one so uh brock bowers is doing very well there in the passing game and uh garter Minshew is not throwing for a ton of yards but he's only got a couple guys to throw to so uh getting over this total for jacoby myers last week against the chiefs was a really really nice sign that is a great defense and he went over against Denver. That's another great defense. So 52 and 72 yards in the last two games that he's played against really good defenses. Now he gets the Bengals. I think this number's too low. So let's cash in Jacoby Myers over 48 half yards receiving. As somebody who's probably going to get stuck with a Bengals survivor pick this week, I don't know if I like this very much. But that is okay. Uh, you're absolutely right. Uh, and then also I have to cheer for Brock because he's on my fantasy team. But nobody cares about your fantasy team. Don't forget, folks. Andy Lang, tell everybody where you can get all of your UFC, all of your golf, all of your slap fighting, and whatever other crazy sport you handicap over at Wager Talk. Back, remember when you were betting on the hillbillies that fought each other in Indiana somewhere? (laughs) I've bet on a lot of I've bet on a lot of strange things, Kelly. I once bet on an MMA fighter who had one leg. Uh, He did not win. (laughs) Cash it. Uh, I mean, yes, but I, I bet I bet a lot of things. Um, but uh, no, there will not be hillbilly fighting 
uh, for part of all access clients. Uh, there will not be power slap, even though I've done well on power slap, actually. You can only bet like $50 maximum, though. So, no, uh, we're up 161 units this year, Kelly. Yeah, in all honesty, it could not be going better. We've hit 71% of our NFL bets in the month of October. So this has been a really, really good run. We had our 5% college football play last week, and we've got another one up this week. We're 7-2 and two this year in college football plays. Uh, UFC, we're hitting over 65% as well. So I encourage everyone to go check out those plays, wt.buzz slash AL. Running a really nice special for uh, 30 days for the month of November. A lot of really good sports, so take advantage of that. And as always, take two of these and call me in the morning. All right, thanks, Andy Lang. From the doctor to the daddy, the stat daddy that is, it's time for some TNA with Ralph Michaels. Ralph Michaels, TNA, pick of the week. Ralph, I know a lot of people are kind of mad that we've shortened your segment here on Bet On It. So can you please let them know where else they can find your extended versions of TNA? Well, Kelly, I'll throw up a couple systems on Twitter on Friday at Cal Sports LV and you know, NBA fans, I did a segment today on Wager Talk with NBA teams with no rest. It's pretty interesting well, so check that out. Watch Wager Talk today or check it out on my Twitter feed at CalSportsLV. Yeah, we know all of those uh, audience members of yours really love the real TNA. No, all jokes aside, Ralph, it is week nine in the NFL, which is absolutely insane to think about. But We've got to get some winners here. And I took a sneak peek in the back end, and you and I are in agreement on this one, which always makes me happy. Well, Kelly, there are nine teams in the NFL with a win percentage of 70% or higher. Three of them are in this division, including Detroit, with the coach that has the best favorite record ATS against Green Bay, the coach with the best underdog record in the NFL. You know, I look at Detroit. Detroit only had 225 yards against Tennessee. They did have a ton of return yards with interceptions, and they were plus four turnovers. But year to date, you think of Detroit, and yes, everyone has Detroit power rated higher than Green Bay. But statistically, when you break down year to date numbers, Green Bay is actually number six in the NFL at plus 61 yards per game. Detroit is plus 35.7 yards per game. That's a 25-yard per game difference. That is huge this close into the season. As I mentioned, we have injuries on both sides. Well, is he going to go? Well, it looks like he's going to give it a try with his injury, but I'm okay if he doesn't go with Willis. You know, Love has seven interceptions on the season. Willis has started two games. Yes, they were the Colts and they were the Titans, but he did complete 73.5% with a 2-0 ratio. As I said, Matt LaFleur as a dog. 24-11, 69% against the spread, blindly betting every Packers game as a dog. LaFleur is a home dog. Not only is he 6-2 and two ATS, including three straight wins and covers, he's actually pulled the outright upset 6 out of 8 times. Detroit side, we know they're off the win against Tennessee. Yes, that was a great win coming off a Minnesota win with a Green Bay win on deck. Might have been Marco Sandwich game last week. I don't remember, but Detroit really did play well. But here's the problem. We're looking at a Detroit team that has beat won every game except Tampa Bay. Yes, they are a little better than Green Bay. But this Green Bay team, guys, you look at their losses. They had a 39-24 to loss against Philadelphia in Brazil in the opener, but they had a yardage edge. Their only other loss this season was against Minnesota, 31-29, to where they had a 91-yard edge. And when I get to the TNA, Kelly, a couple situations to look for. From Game 7 and on, so game seven through the final game of the regular season, if both teams have a win percentage of 75% or higher, the home dog is 68% against the spread, and that goes all the way back to 1997. If they are a home dog up to plus five, 
They are 75% against the spread. Now, I'm going to mention this system, and yes, Detroit was part of this system a few weeks ago after their Dallas win, and they did cover. But teams off a win of 35 points or more and are now a favorite of three or more with a total of 50 or less, 8-28 and 28 against the spread, that's 22.2%. And yes, that does include the other Detroit game. But again, the big system for me is both teams, win percentage is 75% or higher, a 68% system, and a 75% system as a small dog. Give me the Packers. With the even if Love plays or doesn't play, I'm okay. I think the Love question mark is actually less important than Detroit Lions without Hutchinson. Hutchinson, seven and a half sacks, a forced fumble, 17 quarterback hurries. I think his loss would be more than a banged up Love or Love sitting out this game. Defensive battle for me, home dog, plus the points, best home dog coach. I'll take Green Bay. Well, I guess I don't need to do my best bet segment now, do I? All jokes aside, we are going to get to best bets. But first, Ralph, let everybody know what they can find from you in the NFL over at wagertalk.com. Well, guys, uh, I'm just finishing up my college football card for this week, and I'm just turning to the NFL, so I'm looking forward to it. I've got a couple games circled that are in the mix. It could be a potential double 5% this week in college football and the NFL. More likely, I will have a college football 5% total. But check it out, wt.buzz backslash rm. All right, time for those best bets. And we're going to go down the line, me going last. But, of course, Marco D'Angelo, you are up first. But before we get started, please let everybody know what you have going on over at wagertalk.com. Well, Kelly, we've been on a roll. We hit another 5% play last week at absolute blowout rocking chair. I needed one of those. We had California uh, in college football, a uh, 44 to set blowout. We liked that one. That brought our record on our 5% plays to 14 and three over the last 17. You want to jump on board? We've got the deal of the year. You can pick up a full calendar year of my plays. That's all of my plays for uh, 12 months. For just eleven hundred and eighty-eight dollars, that's ninety-nine dollars a month. Normally, this package is nineteen ninety-nine. We're running a special this week. You can get it for eleven eighty-eight. Just head over to my homepage. That's every play, every sport, including all of those five percent plays that by themselves sell for thirty-five dollars each. Uh, join me, ride along. We're having a fantastic twenty twenty-four. Be a part of it now. As far as our best bet this week in the NFL, well, we're going to take a team that's got to be tired of seeing the last play of last week's game, and that is the Chicago Bears. And how many times they've had to look at that held Mary and bonehead play from the defender that was in the corner, uh, you know, chanting and talking uh, to the fans when he should have been playing defense. Uh, it's been a rough week for Chicago. And the best thing for them, I feel, is to be on the road this week. No reason to be at home, listen to the boo birds and everything else. They're going to be playing an Arizona team that's returning home. And let's be honest, Arizona's been a surprise uh, what they've done so far this year. But they played some teams at the right time. Last week, they caught Miami. And I know a lot of people were riding Miami with the return of Tua. But let's be honest, he had missed most of the season with injury. And, you know... Nothing to make light of, you know, the concussion scenario. Uh, tentative on the running. Didn't see Tua tuck it as many times as he normally would in a game. Has to be, you know, cautious, maybe go down early, you know, giving up his body not to get a hit. Uh, so they weren't the Miami Dolphins that we have seen in the past. They still put up a good performance last week, but they'll get better as the weeks go by. I'm looking at the Chicago team in Washington has scored on everybody this year. Daniels was back last week. Granted, he played, you know, hurt, but he still put up big numbers offensively. Uh, Washington had almost 500 yards. Granted, you know, 75 of it came on that last drive in the Hail Mary uh, pass, but they only put up 12 points. So Chicago did their job defensively, 
holding them well below their season average. I think they've got a tremendous advantage this week playing Arizona in the fact they're basically playing the same type of team back-to-back weeks. What's the difference between Daniels and Kingsbury's offense in Washington and facing Kyler Murray this week in Arizona? It's basically the same concept. So that gives them a leg up. Plus, they've got to want to get that bad taste out of their mouth from the ending of last week's game. I don't trust Arizona. They You can run the football on this team. Everybody has been running the football at will against them. And I think Chicago has a successful day on the ground, which will open things up for the passing game. I'm going with Chicago as my best bet this week. I've got the Bears 28-20. to 20. All right, Joe Ranieri, it is week nine in the NFL. Give me your best bet. Well, Kyle, I think uh, we all cleared house in the best bets uh, last week. I uh, I took Atlanta laying the two and a half. Um, that got uh, that got uh, home for us there against Tampa. And I don't think I've had a best bet involving my favorite kind of play, Kyle. And Marco will attest to this. Uh, anytime I have a game that I have no interest in uh, watching uh, the full four quarters, we will go with a first half bet. And we are going to go in the first half this week with the Ravens laying just under a touchdown against your Denver Broncos, Kelly. And listen, Denver's won five of the last six, but let's, I mean, let's be honest here. They have played, I believe, uh, close to the second or third easiest schedule in the league to this particular point. Now you've got a Ravens team looking to bounce back after a loss to Cleveland, this feels like a big step up in weight class here for the Broncos uh, heading to the Ravens' hometown here. Now, listen, the thing that the Ravens have a problem with defensively is going to be their secondary and defending the pass. The problem is Bo Nix is not a guy that is going to be able to take advantage of the deficiencies that Baltimore has in the secondary, not to mention the Ravens could very well have back Marlon Humphrey and Nate Wiggins in this game. They have been a little banged up in the secondary, but we're talking about a Broncos team that has been very good defensively, which, you know, Vance Joseph has done a great job here with this crew. They love to blitz. Blitz, blitz, blitz. The problem is Lamar Jackson is probably the best quarterback in the NFL right now against the blitz. In fact, uh, he's averaging close to 10 yards a play against the blitz you don't want to blitz Lamar Jackson all that often the problem is Sean Payton might not have a choice also keep in mind Lamar Jackson 54 29 and 2 against the number 65 percent in the first half in his career he is the single most profitable quarterback to back against the number in the first half in NFL history This is a great spot to back the Ravens who are going to come out. I think punch Denver right in the mouth here. They will look to put this game away quickly. uh, And I just don't think Bo Nix and Denver are going to be built to come from behind in this game. I think that's exactly where Lamar Jackson and the Ravens will want to be. Playing from in front by having, as far as I'm concerned, a double-digit lead in the first half. And that's exactly the way I'm going to look at this one. Give me the Ravens' latest six in the first half against Denver. All right, Teddy, time for best bets. As Joe mentioned, we got the sweep last week. Let's keep it rolling this week. Yeah, I would love to see this would be as easy as last week's. Last week, you could have turned off Philly in the fourth quarter. You didn't need to watch. They were up by 20 catching points. And today, we're going to talk about another live dog. And Kelly, you like them as a barking dog. I like them as a best bet. Let's talk about the Miami Dolphins. Plus the points. There's no urgency to bet this. I would not be surprised at all if we see Buffalo money before kickoff. Uh, I had the pleasure of talking with Arthur DeCesar from the Westgate Superbook this morning. He said the Bills are clearly a public side this week. He expects to see more Buffalo money. I'll take the sharp side here. Now, Buffalo does have five straight wins in the series since 2022. That being said, two by a field goal, one by a touchdown, and two blowouts. So it's been a mixed bag in terms of winning by margin against Miami throughout this five-game winning streak. The one of the two blowouts came back in September. And, of course, the Bills are 6-2 and two right now, but a grand total of zero of those six wins have come against an opponent with a winning record. Make no mistake about it. Buffalo has been feasting on the week. Then again, the question is Miami week. I mean, they're 2-5 and five 
They're coming off a bad home loss to Arizona. But I think they're a better team than that. <laughs> uh, I certainly do. Let's not forget, the loss to Arizona, they led by double digits in the first half. They led by double digits in the third quarter. They led by double digits in the fourth quarter. And they lost the game by a point late, which will work fine for us here. And the biggest play of the game was a bad snap over to his head that they lost 30 yards on and it cost them a touchdown try. So eh, Miami's fine. You know, they only punted twice in that game, 150 rushing yards. They're up two scores in the fourth. Tua didn't miss a beat. The offense worked the quotes after the game. Tyree Kill, he came back, got the offense going. That was a beautiful thing to see. We scored some points today. Season I, 27 points last week. Season I, 377 yards. These are positive signs for what I think is a live road divisional dog in Buffalo on Sunday. Give me the points with the Dolphins. I think they'll hang around in this one. I love that. Teddy and I are on the same side, and Ralph and I are on the same side. I like the Packers here as my best bet, catching three and a half here at home. I know, we heard VR say that Detroit was one of his top three teams, and I don't want to take away from that. But I do believe in my heart of hearts and uh, in my note sheet that the Packers in the NFC North are one of the best divisions in all of football. But I think Detroit has gotten just a little too much love. Green Bay, past two weeks, won by a last-minute field goal. I think that could be the same for here on Sunday. Detroit has now played two games without Aiden Hutchinson, so I know Ralph Michaels was mentioning that, hey, it's going to be a problem without him there on defense, but I think they've learned how to play without him. But you start to look at the box score. How bad did they really beat Tennessee last week? Tennessee, 416 total yards, 23 first downs, and almost six yards per play in Detroit. They had a drive stall on the Lions' one-yard line. They had a fumble. It was just gross. But I think if we look at what Mason Rudolph could do versus the Lions, what can Jordan Love do? Or, as Ralph said, worst case, Malik Willis. So I like the points, but I also like the money line. Give me the Green Bay Packers. All right, guys. It's been a fun one with all the technology issues. It took us about four hours to record the NFL edition. So I'm going to need you guys to hit a lot of likes, say nice things to Marco in the comments section. And if you guys are not already subscribed, please do so. So from Marco, Joe, Teddy, VR, Andy, Ralph, and myself, until next week, let's bet on it.